Right. That should be us. Yeah, so it says we are live. Yep, we are live. I'm just trying to find it to share it. Same. <laughs> hey, everybody. Um, we're nearly with you. There it is. Have you got it? I haven't. Yeah, I had to reload your page. It for some reason wasn't showing at first. Yeah, uh, the reload always helps. Well, I'm reloading and I still don't have us, but I know that we are on Facebook Live. So, hello, well, welcome to everybody who is tuning in to be with us. This is a, another pop up that happened uh, in our brains just moments ago, half an hour to be exact. So, a very warm welcome from me. My name is Kerry Kay. You're listening to my show called Voices of the Heart. And on Voices of the Heart, I have people who I know can speak directly to your heart. And that is this wonderful man in front of us, Jason Estes. Jason, a super warm welcome to you. Thank you for initiating this wonderful spontaneous event that we're going to be doing. Thank you. Yeah, it's been quite fun. I feel like it was needed. So here we are. Yeah. Well, it was so quick. I didn't even have time to let anybody know. I didn't have time to make a poster. So whoever's here on the live, you are truly meant to be here. There's already just under 100 people with us. I do not know how you guys do that. You happen to be online at the right time. So very warm welcome and well done to all of you. Uh, Monica Ramirez, I haven't seen you on the live stream in ages, and that doesn't mean you're not here. I just haven't seen your beautiful name. So hello to Monica, Sarah Dune, Ariel Power, hello. Amy Couture, hello darling. Jennifer Ann, Pia, hello sweetheart. Tim Buzzer, and a whole lot more. We've just gone to, whoopsie, we've just gone to about 120 people. So I know the numbers will keep climbing. And I know that we've got a very important message. Can you feel how there is an anticipation in the air at the moment, an unnamed, unspoken anticipation sitting for some people very uncomfortably at the moment. Okay. So Jason, tell us a little bit about that, please. So I told people in a very small little tiny window that we were gonna have a really crazy event in July and that the first 15 days is gonna be called a resource burn. But I didn't wanna freak people out. So I decided to just call it a resource burn, say at one time only, and then never speak of it again. So that the people that needed to hear it heard it and the people that didn't didn't. And that's totally fine. You, you made it through it, you're through the resource burn. So what that was, was an entire year. And it wasn't just any year, it was all of 2019, the resources it cost you in 2019, you burnt through all of those in order to get to where we are. Now people are like, why is there a resource burn? There's going to be another one next month, but it's not going to be massive like this one. The reason that we have to have a resource burn was because we basically are now in orbit. So if you know much about like a space shuttle taking off and everything, it burns through all of its resources really fast to get into orbit. And then once it's in orbit, gravity takes over and it begins to orbit, right? And that's where we are now. As a spiritual being, we are now orbiting. Now, the reason this is a big deal is because also, when you're in orbit, you have zero gravity. So what that looks like is things just start to float off of you. So what you're noticing, most likely, if, if you're a human being right now, is that things are starting to float up and you're starting to have different thoughts, different patterns, all these weird things are coming up for you. Your body might be in pain in certain areas. All kinds of very interesting things are happening. And the reason that this is all happening is because you are now in zero G. So you're now at a spiritual level floating. And so all these things that weigh you down are causing excess pressure in those locations, which is why you have that pain. And if you have that pain, you just tap it, tap wherever that pain is, right? It doesn't have to be a big deal. You don't have to go, oh, I need to go take a handful of Tylenol. I need to go see a doctor and do all these things. Now, if it's in front of you to do those things, absolutely. But before you do, take a moment, come back to center, try your own tools and technology, even if it's only for a minute, it doesn't have to be a big deal and see if it creates relief. And if it does create relief, then maybe you do it a little longer than a minute. But ultimately that's up to you. So the reason that I wanted to go live today and talk about this was because there's a lot of people that are freaking out. And I've been getting tons of messages these last few days about people like, I don't understand what's going on. It's like everything I've done doesn't do anything. And it's like, cause you don't, you've never been in zero G before. We've never been in orbit. This is huge. This is us preparing for the end of this world, the sector that we know and the beginning of a whole new thing. And so we're in like the last phase of it. 
And the way I like to describe it is we've left our, our comfortable planet behind. We're now in orbit. And so the timeline that we were in is no longer the timeline that we're in. We're orbiting around the timeline. So we're still able to go to the timeline if we want to. But for those of you that are in orbit, you're preparing for what comes next. And what comes next is a rescue mission of sorts, where we're going to be dry docking with another spaceship that had its engines cut, so it, it can't travel anymore. I call this the chaos bubble. And so we've created a very strong difference between, we're no longer, we left the planet differently, right? And two different realities, but we're still orbiting the same timeline. They're just not able to do anything. They're dead in the water. And because they're dead in the water, we are going to rescue them. Now, what this looks like is around the 13th of August, and I'll probably do another live around here just to like say, hey guys, it's about to get weird. And when I say it's about to get weird, I mean it's going to get weird. Because what's going to happen is we're going to open up our airlock and we're going to connect to their airlock. And they, we're going to go in and basically try to find the refugees and the people that are ready to move over before the ship engines and life support wear off and basically ends. So that being said, this rescue mission is, is really important. And in order to do it, once we orbit the ship, we're going to have to burn resources to get to the ship. And so that's what you're going to be experiencing early August to about the middle of August, because by the 16th of August, the rescue mission will be over. We'll be leaving the ship behind and those that weren't ready will be, we don't know what's going to happen to that actually. It's, a, it's kind of a interesting thing that's up in the air right now about that. That being said, it's going to be kind of like hell broke loose. Because when we open up that airlock, all of the stuff, all of the third dimensional density, everything that still remains is going to come out. And it's going to be almost like poison air just enters the space. The good news is we have a state-of-the-art HVAC system. So we are good. We just have to hold our space. Now, you can get lost in that, that confusion, that chaos if you want to, but you don't have to. And if you watch, things are moving towards the light every day. There are more people on the ship of the light, so to speak. So this chaos has to come in so that it can be cleared once and for all. And then from then on, it's just a quick jaunt to November 8th. And uh, then we all get to see where we land next. But I can tell you right now where we land next is going to be more amazing than anything you can imagine. So we're almost there. And the hardest part was getting into orbit, which we are now in. So all you're going to start to feel while you're in orbit is these things are going to bubble up and just face them, work through them. This is a gift because it's showing up for you so that when we open up that airlock and it comes out, it doesn't attach to you because it can only attach to you if you still have judgments around it or you still are rejecting it. If you're accepting it, it will just run through you into the HVAC system, be completely cleaned up, and we're, we're done. Super fast. Doesn't have to be a big ordeal. And in fact, I don't think it's going to have to be as big of an ordeal as people are thinking it's going to be. But there is still going to be a lot of chaos and confusion. There's going to be a lot of things coming out that people aren't necessarily ready to handle. But together, we are ready to handle it. So mm -hmm. if you see someone struggling, you can just smile at them, give them a hug. If you're in a place where you're not allowed to hug, you can just smile at them. That, that's totally fine. And if you're behind a mask and you're smiling at them, it's in the eyes. They know. They know. So know that whatever you choose to do, if you see someone struggling, just be a kind presence in their life for a little bit and do what's in front of you because we are almost there. It might look chaotic now. It might feel chaotic now. But every day, one of the leaders the harder, more intense people that are creating corruption and chaos in our world is exposed and relinquished their power. So, you know, we had major, major updates in that over this, this week alone. It's just tons of high profile people that have been doing very dark things on this planet for a long time are no longer able to do those things. So it's actually becoming cleaner with each day, not dirtier. It just looks dirtier because it's being exposed. But the simple fact that it's being exposed means that we don't need it anymore. It's no longer in hiding. You see, this is something that's really important to understand. If something's hiding, it can affect you in a whole new level. But if it's in front of you, yeah, it's going to trigger you, but then you can work through it. 
and then you can resolve it. And then you don't have to ever be triggered by it again. So ultimately we are in orbit, be prepared for things to come up, be prepared to feel pain in your body in certain areas, because that's the density that's pulling down on your body while you're in zero G and raising up. So there is gonna be excessive pressure on your human anatomy in this time. Also in a few days, we're gonna have a nine point matter influx. This is the very last one, the, the jaw influx. It's the very last one of the matter influxes. So it's actually going to scrape the bottom of density and everything will have to be resolved or it will just stay up, but it will no longer hide. So this is a really powerful time for us because we're in zero G. We are being shown the less levels of our density that are struggling. These are different aspects of us. They're different things that we're in judgment around, around the third dimension. And as we begin to resolve this, we naturally begin to elevate up. And you're gonna notice that for any of you that have done the work, you kind of start to feel like you're just like, oh, well, this is it's kind of disorienting, but I'm, I'm getting used to it. That's because we're in orbit, we're in zero G. And if you were a, a space person for the first time ever, you would also be disoriented by gravity, even though you trained for it and everything else. It'd be new sensation, right? Well, this is a new sensation but it's a great sensation, one that we will love very much though, because where we're going, we're going to be in the same state, even though we're gonna be grounded on a timeline. So that being said, this is not a time to freak out, but if you feel you need to freak out and that's what's in front of you, there's nothing wrong with that. But know that there is a ton of people who are doing the work right now to make sure that we arrive at our location and that this is just a temporary transition that we are in. Mm. Wow, thank you so much. So we've got 260 people on the live and uh, beautiful comments as I'm looking down, there was somebody, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name, who said it was 4 a.m. in Thailand. I don't know why you're awake at 4 a.m., but mm -hmm. thank you for being here. Somebody in Iceland that was saying, hey, Iceland in the house. So we've got people from really all over the world. And there's so many people who I can see from the comments are going, whew, Thank you, Jason. There's this little little bit of relief happening for them as much as you're not pinpointing specifics because I think what unfolds is a surprise to all of us, really. I know that your words provide solace and, and insight and understanding for people. So I've got a couple of questions. Oh, but before I tell you what the questions are, uh, there was a funny comment from Jas Kaur and it was when you said earlier, hell's going to break loose. Jess commented, has hell not already broken loose? <laughs> I think a lot of people feel that way, you know? A lot of people yeah. are gonna be going, what does it mean hell's going to break loose? It has already. So what you're saying is we're in for a little bit more, but is it externally or internally or both? So for those that are, on the ship that are in orbit, it's external hells breaking loose. Internally, we've been being tested. Like we were in a space station on the planet being tested in zero G. We were having things thrown at us, all that other stuff. That's what the first six months was, was okay, what still needs to be learned? This next six months is what we couldn't process. So for many of us, and again, this is what I was saying, like when we go, we're, we were prepared for this rescue mission that we're about to go on. We were prepared for it. So it's not like, oh, I don't know what's going to happen. Your body knows exactly what's going to happen. Your consciousness knows exactly what's going to happen. And it's actually going to feel natural because you're in this. Right now, those last little pieces of doubt are what's coming up for you. Those last little hurdles that you aren't ready for are coming up for you. And the thing is, there's a part of you that is ready for it. It just might not be all of you yet. So find that part of you within and get to know it so that you can expand into it because you are totally ready for this. This is not a surprise. It might seem like a surprise because you've forgotten things before you got here, but it's not a surprise. This is us getting ready for the end game of end games. This is the end of the sector. I talked about this many times, but this is huge. This is a new age for the world. And I don't mean new age spirituality. I mean, new age, like a completely new thing. The, the miracles that I know that are coming the things that I, I personally am aware of that are happening, it's just, it's insane. And that's just one person. I learned about really cool technology that is going to be launched in September. And I'm like, wow, we're actually ready for that. We're ready to share these things with the world. Okay, this is, 
this is new. We're going to be rethinking medicine most likely in the next six months because the way that we put chemicals into our body isn't necessary because our voltage is getting purer and purer. We're going to start to have a whole new way of looking at anatomy. It's going to be really amazing. You're going to have to forget a lot of what you've been taught so that you can see it clearly. But where we're headed is a new age of all things, a new opportunity in all things. And it's incredible. It's just truly incredible. And it's being built behind the scenes right now by people that I 100% trust. I'm part of a team that's building stuff too. And we're working towards creating an opportunity for the world to learn ridiculously fast. Mm, so fantastic. it's not something to be scared of. When I say hell's breaking loose, that's a, an important thing because I'm saying breaking loose. I'm saying it's no longer going to be contained. Mm. When it's contained is when the problem happens. Because if you contain something, it gets angrier and angrier and angrier and angrier until eventually it breaks loose. But the moment it breaks loose, it actually gets to experience freedom. And then it has opportunities, then it has choices. And depending on what those opportunities and choices are, it's going to either go away or it's going to evolve. And it can evolve into something that is beautiful and amazing. It's kind of like uh, good and evil in the Bible. If you actually go back in time and you, you look at it in the Aramaic, it actually means ripe and unripe, right? So good is ripe and unripe is evil. That's how we translated it. That's not true. Unripe just means it hasn't had enough time yet. So that which is evil can change. It's like my, my favorite uh, quote in the world is every center has a past, or no, every state has a past and every center has a future. Because ultimately we all go through something to become who we are. And the more that we let go of the judgments of what we went through, the more that we can become who we are. And this world has been giving us many opportunities to let go of those judgments. I've talked about judgment, I don't know, like four or five different lives now. But when we work through and we accept judgment, when we actually go, okay, I can accept that I'm judging and I don't want to anymore. Now I can do the work to no longer need to judge. The world becomes an incredible place. It becomes an opportunity to evolve. And that's what you came for, to evolve. The world that we're going to isn't going to be the same type of opportunities to evolve because they're going to be more like opportunities to evolve in the fifth dimension or the sixth dimension or the seventh dimension. And those are a lot less chaotic, but they're, they're very much the same thing. So how do I describe this? People are like, oh, okay, well, when you reach enlightenment, your world becomes easy. That's never going to be the case, guys, like ever. It's going to still have some level of challenge because otherwise you wouldn't want to be here. But does that mean that it has to be painful? That you have to suffer through it? No. It just means that there's a challenge. See, I personally love puzzles. Puzzles are being challenged and you, you put things together and you find the way that they go together and then you're, you're done, right? And then, then you can celebrate because you've completed something. But if there was no challenge, if they handed you a puzzle that was complete, you'd be like, I didn't earn this. Why, why would I celebrate this? You just look at it and be like, it's a, it's a picture. That's all it is, right? But the act of putting the puzzle together creates this value within you where you actually learn a new skill. You learn to identify things differently. You look at patterns differently, all these things. So as we progress forward, think of less suffering, more opportunity, and more ability to evolve faster. That's kind of what our future looks like. Is it going to be that the whole world is instantly reset overnight like a light switch? No, it won't be that. And that's a good thing. Because then eventually another force would just come in and be like, oh, so that light switch is what did that? Okay, one second. And then they would just turn it right off. And then everybody like, oh, the dark ages, it's so horrible. But if you progressively raise, you progressively evolve, there is no light switch because the foundation raised with you. We've been working on building the foundation for a fifth dimensional society. We've been working on building that foundation, not flipping the light switch not having extraterrestrial beings come down and be like, here, here's the fifth dimension, the puzzle's already solved, enjoy, because we wouldn't have earned it. Every single person who takes a breath on November 9th, you earned the right for everything that comes your way. You did, you made it. You made it to a place where you are ready for what's next. And what's next again is less suffering, more opportunity, 
and more expansion. Also greater teachers than you can imagine because you're one of them. So. Wow, we. Jason, um, there was a beautiful comment earlier from Sharon Foster, who I can't remember, it's not in front of me right now, said something along the lines of the end is also the beginning. Yep. And, and I think that that's a beautiful thing for people to be reminded of right now, because I know there's a lot of people going into this end of the world yeah. kind of chaos. And I know it feels that way it's also quite beautiful because the end really is the beginning that I know that we've all been waiting for. Jason, the end of this sector, now you've spoken a little bit more about that, but what I want to know is as a sector ends, does that mean that it's empty, like not utilized and occupied? So anytime that a sector is created, it's basically enough people that agree to the experiences of that sector necessary to evolve it. So basically imagine that you look at the sector and you go, okay, so that experience there, I actually need that experience too. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into this sector so that I can get this experience. And so you become a team that enters into this and you create an opposition and you create another opposition that opposes this opposition. So what you do is you create polarity because otherwise, you would just be drifting in space with nothing to accomplish. Mm -hmm. So you have something that challenges you so that you can become better. And then you challenge it so that it can become, become better. But eventually that game closes out and the sector closes because all of the needed experiences have been cultivated and created. And everyone that, like not everyone, but the majority of people have agreed, hey, this is no longer something I need to play. So what happens is that sector stays, but the group evolves into the next sector. So this group of people who are like, I actually still need some of these experiences stay. And they're usually what's considered the enlightened ones of the new sector, because a new team of people come together, new experiences get put into the sector and then it goes again. But the same people stay in that sector. Sometimes they get moved to a different planets. Sometimes they stay on the same planet. It's completely different depending on the sectors and like the, what is needed in the universe. Because remember, this is all part of the ascension and it's much greater than just Earth. If this was just Earth's ascension, I personally wouldn't have come here because there are so many other things that need to happen. But this is the entire universe ascending and this was the weak point of the universe at this time. So a whole lot of high level beings came to Earth so that they could be here to help basically just kind of shoot it up really fast because it, it needed a lot of help. And here we are closing out a sector, moving up completely into a whole new game. Now, if you understand parallels, this gets a bit complicated, but if you understand parallel realities and things like that, you understand that there is going to be an earth that ascends and there's going to be an earth that doesn't ascend. So consciousness will be between these two earths. So that means you could wake up in this earth that needs to keep going. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's absolutely, totally fine because that is a soul level decision. So that is not like you as a person going, well, you know, I'm actually good. I don't need anything anymore. That's <laughs> your soul saying, actually, I still need this. And the good news is the sector won't be as hard as this sector was, it never is. Because the people that made it through this sector and like learn the things that they needed to learn and spun up everything, they stay, some of them, as teachers to help that sector ascend. So it's always better and better each time. And then that's what makes sectors ascend really fast until eventually a sector dissolves. That's really complicated. Sectors dissolving means that there is no being in all of time and space that needs any experiences related to that anymore. So for instance, zero dimension doesn't exist anymore because of the whole Atlantean thing. The first dimension is only somewhat in this universe. The second dimension is still in this universe, but it's usually like a parasitic thing. And then you get to the third dimension and the third dimension is getting closer to not needing it anymore. I would say probably in the next four to 8 billion years in this universe, we'll probably be done with it. And each time the universe raises up, we're getting given back the opportunity to be omnidimensional beings. We're, we're getting, get like, uh, just, mm. I'm really happy about that. That's like a major thing. That means that we are ready as a universe to be connected back to the omniverse, which we, we've already been given that permission. But the fact that we have it again 
is so big because you know as those energies keep coming in those multi-dimensional energies those omnidimensional energies we begin to remember things that we had forgotten and we begin to acknowledge new tools and technologies that are just out of this world literally and so it becomes a really fun game so the future of where we're headed is just it's going to be a lot of really fun games and there's not going to be mm. nearly as much corruption and chaos there will probably still be some corruption and chaos up until like probably 2022 or so but it'll be in pockets it won't be the leaders in corruption and chaos it will be pockets of resistance and again that's not a bad thing that's saying hey this is still a needed experience and when you look at lower fourth dimension you're looking at victim and in order for victim to exist you need a victimizer now does it need to be a self-sabotaging victimizer no because self-sabotage and sabotage itself is a third dimensional principle. So you see the lowest you get to go is victim and victimizer, which is an exchange. And I think that we'll outlevel that game by the end of 2022 very fast. Like people just be like, I don't, what, like, what's the point of this? It doesn't go anywhere anymore. Hmm. So. Wow. Jason, I'm pretty sure somebody's going to ask if they haven't already. Um, but for the sake of clarity, what is a sector? It's not a word we're used to hearing. I know that it's a Jasonism. So just in case somebody asks, what is a sector? Answer that question for them. So a sector is like an entire level of consciousness. So many people, they always talk about density and they talk about consciousness. They talk about all these other words, ascension, um, density shifts, all these words. But ultimately a sector is a bubble of games that need to be played to reach a certain level of clarity within your own being and valor, because valor is the only thing that transitions lifetime to lifetime. So when you cultivate those things, you're able to move to a new sector. Sometimes beings from higher sectors come to lower sectors because it's what's needed for the higher sector to ascend to. Because we are always working with ourselves throughout time and space to continue to evolve. That's the coolest part about life is you will always evolve in it, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Even if you think you devolve, you will eventually look at that experience and learn something from it and you will evolve from it. And since time is infinite, you will eventually evolve from every experience. So anytime that you have an opportunity to play, you get to play. And that's the beauty of it. But like I was saying before, like zero dimensional beings, right? Or I guess I could explain the sector a little differently. So you have a sector and it's usually three levels. So zero, one, two, right? That's a whole sector, which is why it's almost gone. Then you have the next sector, right? And the next sector would be three, four, five. See how five is above three and four? That's kind of how you understand sectors. And the reason you do that is because when you get to five, you can no longer play three, but you can still play four. And so four can also be played in five. And that's just kind of how it goes. So as you understand consciousness as a sector perspective, you kind of understand more of like how time would look if you if you looked at time as a line cosmic time going up and then you flipped it you would see that there are rings that create sectors but because most people can't see cosmic time and the ones that do only see it vertical they don't actually see the rings it's a perspective thing hmm. all right you know this conversation just makes me so grateful for everything that we've been through to bring us here and I don't mean everything we've been through just on planet Earth. I mean, every life that we've lived that has culminated in this now moment and all the experiences that we've lived through, the choices that we made, the unseen struggles that we may have fought, just the whole gamut of experience that we've been through to just be here now. It, it gives me a kind of awe, actually, when I think about it. Yeah. You know, because I realize that we did is just mind-blowing and then well that's we the thing yeah. is what we made it from that's going to be even more mind-blowing and that's what's coming what's mm -hmm. coming is an opportunity to look from the eyes of immortality at everything you've accomplished and not just in this lifetime like you're, you're coming to a place where you get to look at all of that mm -hmm. that's an insanely awesome opportunity as a physical being when you, you become non-physical and you transition into death that's completely different right because, you know, then you, you're outside of time at some level, or maybe you're in layers of time, but still, you, you get to look at it, but you can't really do anything with what you look at other than, oh, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. But when you're here, you go, 
oh, interesting. Well, if that happened then, what if I had done this? Oh, well, let's see what if I apply that now. Oh, cool, I moved the game forward, right? So the opportunity to look back with 2020 perspective, so to speak, is incredible. As long as you're still alive, you, you can still change, you can still evolve, you can still expand. And the fact that we're giving, get, getting given this opportunity to look back while still being alive, I don't know about y'all, yeah. but that's like, that's massive. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I'm really filled with the awe of it right now. And what's so interesting is that, you know, there's, again, reading through the comment section here, we've got 300 people on the live stream and the comments are so varied. There's people going, oh, I'm so elated. Oh, this is so wonderful. And there's a couple, not many, but there's a couple of people going, oh, this is so heavy. When is this going to yeah. end? You know, and, and, and I get that that's just where we are right now. There are those two kind of extremes of experience. Mm -hmm. As long as there's two realities, you're going to have two extremes. I've talked to so many mm -hmm. people who have been flip-flopping, is what they call it, and they can't handle it. Like, it's like they're in this polar, like, joyous, everything is great, and then, like, a thought comes up, and then they immediately end up in the chaos bubble, and they're like, the world's going to end tomorrow. This is such a horrible thing. Oh, my God, I must do all these things. Ah! And I'm like, <laughs> take a deep breath in, put your hand on your heart. Now what do you feel? And they're like, oh, everything's wonderful and amazing. And I'm like, so what you just did, the next time you feel chaotic, just do that again. Because you don't have to stay in that bubble. You might get thrown into that bubble. And that's okay to be thrown into that bubble because those things in that bubble that are pulling you back, like a slingshot, are pulling you back because you're tied to them. So when you go into that and then you choose the vanity over entity, what happens is you dissolve that tie. And so the next time you come here, something else that's Oh, I've lost you for a moment, or you've lost me. One of us has lost signal. Hopefully, this is going to be brief. Uh, let's Tied see, Jason. Back. And eventually, oh. there's only so many. Uh, <laughs> one of us is too many. Cool. All right, I'm going to do it anyway, because <laughs> it's important. Good. So Good. you have this chaos bubble, right? And then you have the unity bubble, which is the other timeline, reality kind of thing. And what happens is we get pulled into this. And when we get pulled into this, it's an opportunity to find the thing that pulled us in. Because if we pull ourselves out of it, that's great and all, but that thing's still there and we're going to get slung shot back. And each time we're just making it a much harsher throwback. So the key is when you're here to dissolve it. And then when you come here, something else has to pull you back. And every time you do that, you eventually don't have anything left in the chaos bubble to resolve. And therefore you no longer get pulled into it. And that is the greatest place ever because then you get to be you and this gets to be it and there's no judgment you're just like cool whatever and this goes away soon anyway so when this goes away everything that you haven't done is going to be on you because the moment we open that airlock on the 13th and all of that floods in anything you can't accept or work with is going to stick to you like glue and now it's not getting pulled into you, it's starting to go into you. This is a very big difference because now your blinders are gonna be on, you're gonna see the world in chaos. You're gonna see all these things and you're not gonna be able to put your hand on your heart and instantly come back because there isn't two realities anymore. There's nowhere to hide. Everything is in you is in you. Right now is a great gift because we have an opportunity to observe what is in us that isn't in us yet. And that's huge. So if I look at the chaos bubble and I go, okay, I draw a circle on a piece of paper. Here's a cool little practice for y'all. Draw a circle on a piece of paper, write chaos bubble, and then write everything in it that comes up to you in your consciousness. Then write a list of those things and begin to work on them and mark them off. Because if you can do that, you can remove the things that are pulling you into chaos before they pull you into chaos. And then you're gonna have a great life moving forward. Because when we do go into chaos, because we're all gonna go into chaos together, if there's anything left for you to resolve, it's going to be part of you now, which means it's going to get backgrounded. So it's going to start telling you things behind the scenes. You're going to have all kinds of fun things. Good news is you're going to have a lot of friends that have done the work. They're going to be like, hey, you know that little thing right there that's yeah. talking to you? That's not actually you. You might, you might want to look at this little thing and you might get really angry about that. In fact, most people will until about October 28th. And then they're not going to have a choice to get angry about it anymore. And things are going to get really interesting on this planet. 
because that's the end of the three years of suffering. So until then, though, that thing might start communicating and you might feel like you're backsliding. But remember, you're not actually backsliding. The thing is here. It's actually, you can work with it now. It doesn't have to be in another reality hiding from you. And when you clear it, you're done. It doesn't reattach, it doesn't reappear because the environment is so flooded with light that once it is not attached to something, it dissolves. You don't even have to dissolve it anymore because it will dissolve. That's the cool part because there's nowhere for it to go anymore. We won't have a place to hide from ourselves, but also nothing has a place to hide anymore. So it's kind of a double-edged sword for some people because you're going to get to deal with everything, but you're going to deal with everything once and for all. So all those years of practicing on dealing with things, which is what you've been doing, you've been in like a holographic reality going, well, if I do this clearing work here, then I'm going to clear it. Yeah. In that simulation, you did clear it. Congratulations. This is the real game. And after August 15th, we are in the real game. So you're going to play the same game you've played. If you've done tons of shadow work in the past, congratulations. You know exactly how to handle things really fast. If you didn't, that's okay too. You're going to get to learn. And there's tons of people who have practiced. But the simulation that you did all the work in, that was a simulation. You're about to play the real game. So everything that you did doesn't count for anything other than experience that's going to help you to go faster when the game really starts. Here's the other cool thing. If you've mastered something or cleft out of it, what means is you are going to be handed this thing and you're going to solve it like that and you're going to be done. And then you're going to look and be like, who can I help next? Because it doesn't have to be a struggle. In fact, it's not designed to be a struggle. The real game is going to be awesome. You're going to be like, why do I feel relief after clearing that completely? Like the whole level of my soul, like, it, like that's like gone, gone. Because it is gone, gone. You just finished the game that you've been stuck in in the simulator for a very long time. Jolene Chrisholm Bennett Day writes, Brothers and sisters, I love you. I am so very proud of each and every one of us on our sacred journey. What a very beautiful message. Thank you, Amen. Jolene. Uh, amen. Absolutely. So thanks to everybody sending such beautiful energy and beautiful comments in the comment section. Jason, um, what I wanted to ask you was, there's a couple of people who've mentioned this almost phenomenon at the moment of feeling, they call it disconnected. Mm -hmm. They say, it's as if I'm in a movie kind of like I'm like a spectator that's the word like I'm yeah. watching and I'm spectating now that could sound and particularly at any other time in our earth reality that could sound a little bit dodgy that could sound like well maybe you're not very present then maybe you're not very grounded then I've got a very different perspective that right now that's around about the best place that somebody could be how do you feel about that have you noticed that going on for people well, that, I mean that's the observer perspective so it's not yeah. a bad thing at all. You can make yeah. it a bad thing by yeah. <laughs> not handling what's in front of you and choosing to use that as an escapism. That's totally uh, possible. A lot yeah, of people for sure. do that. But mm. if you're in it and you're celebrating it and then whatever comes in front of you, you're willing to deal with and you're able to continue to maintain it, celebrate that mm. because that's you able to look at things without judgment because an observer doesn't judge. An observer witnesses. And mm. witnessing is the most powerful thing you can do. Now, if you find yourself in judgment and you're not willing to deal with that judgment, that's not observer. That's called spiritual escapism. And there's a whole mm -hmm. other world there. That's called the pink bubble approach to spirituality. And that's going to be popped very soon. Worldwide. doesn't matter how good your bubble is. Just be prepared. But if you are yeah. truly living the observer life, you're truly in that space of the witness. Congratulations. That's awesome. And that disconnect you feel is what you get to work on. That's the wound that you feel that you're disconnected, but you're not actually because you're connected to all things when you're the witness. So yeah, for those of you that I, watched I absolutely 12 Monkeys, agree. you get it. Those of you who didn't watch 12 Monkeys, uh, the, the recommended yeah. show for this month, you don't understand mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. I highly recommend that you watch it if you can handle graphic scenes because it's pretty strong content, but the concepts in it are extremely important. So anyone that wants to understand the witnessing perspective from a bigger angle, watch that series. It's an incredible one. Mm. Um, Jason, I recently wrote an article um, called Making Conscious 
the unconscious, which is, as the name suggests, making known the unknown, because I get that that's where we are. And part of it is this very new way of experiencing life. You put it perfectly when you call it the observer. And because it's so new for a lot of people, they don't always understand and they go into, oh, something must be wrong. And I agree with you. We do need to be mindful that there is such a thing called spiritual bypassing. Um, I've got a YouTube video about spiritual bypassing. So if you're not sure what that is, you could check out my YouTube channel. But if you're aware of a certain kind of peace inside of you, even though there might be a storm brewing in your peripheral vision, then that's a beautiful place that makes you the calm of the storm. It makes you centered and you are inside your own center, which for a lot of people is very new. For a lot of people, that's a whole new experience. And it's not to say that that's where you have to be. It's just to say that there's a number of people experiencing that right now. So if you find yourself being one of them, then definitely embrace it. I think it's it's possibly the nicest or the easiest place to be at the moment. It's not always going to feel that way. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that, you know that that'll definitely fluctuate but if if that becomes your go-to mode of feeling then you you could be doing something very beautiful in your life just remember that it's unshakable peace that she's talking about and what that looks Mm -hmm. like is that something comes to shake you and it doesn't affect you in that way Mm -hmm. because you're able to as is it as it comes forward so Mm -hmm. that unshakable peace is an incredible place to be And it's going to feel disconnected at first because you don't really get to see that very often. There's very few people that I know that hold unshakable peace. And when they do hold it, it's powerful. It doesn't matter how chaotic an experience is. If someone's an unshakable peace around that experience and you witness them, all of a sudden you're like, oh, it's really not that big of a deal. I I, I feel like it's possible, right? Because that's what our job is. In this time, this time right now on this planet, our job is to be an example of unshakable peace as best we can. And what that looks like is I might get shaken out of my peace, but if Bob is in unshakable peace as well, and Bob doesn't get triggered by the thing that just shook me, then there's still an example on the planet. And then I might get back into my peace and then Bob might get shaken. And then I'm still that example, you see, and we're we're a team. So if you find yourself not in the greatest place today, that's okay, because we've got your back. And then if I find myself not in the greatest place tomorrow, that's okay because someone else has got my back. We are a team moving forward. Team humanity is winning. It is overthrowing the corruption of this world in a massive way. And we are slowly but surely inching our way towards a new sector of consciousness. And you're on team humanity. So you, you've got this. And if you're having a bad day, it's okay. It's a day. Don't forget that you still have tomorrow. Don't forget what happened yesterday. And if yesterday was a bad day too, that's okay too. You're not alone in this. Everyone is processing, everyone is working through. And if you are coming into unshakable peace, be prepared to be shooken. That's just how it works. If you are unshakable, things will want to shake you and don't let them. But if you do find yourself shooken, look for someone that isn't and then look at that example and find it within you and expand because all we are are mirrors. So if I'm unshakable in this moment and you're shooken, look into what it is that helps me not to be shooken by that moment and then find it within you and expand it. Because that's all spirituality ever really was. Finding the goodness in someone else or in yourself and expanding it. If you can't find the goodness in you for whatever reason, look towards someone else to find the goodness and then reflect into yourself where that goodness is and then expand that goodness in. And then all of a sudden you become more spiritual. And they now have an example when they're shaken. Because if we can have a team of unshakable peace, this world will find peace soon. And I think we're going to be a world of peace sooner than you guys can even imagine. Because I'm watching many, many, many awesome examples step up into that unshakable peace. And it's just, I mean, I never thought this was going to happen. I was told it was going to happen. I watched it in the timelines over and over and over and over and over again but I never thought I would get to live to see the day where there were more people in unshakable peace than there was corruption. And we are, we were on that day. We, we, we crossed that day actually, that day was May 18th. So we are way ahead. 
So, so now it's just about living as an example of unshakable peace in the world. And you do that by accepting your judgment and then working through your judgment. You spoke earlier, Jason, about um, it looks dirty at the moment, you said. It could look really dirty, but it's actually not. It's because everything is being exposed. And I think that is such a brilliant description for what's going on right now. And of course, we can see that on a global scale. We can see this mass exposure of what was once dirty secrets hidden away. Yeah. This is just a reminder of how beautiful it is when we, each of us as individuals, elect. So in other words, we're not forced to, we elect to look within mm -hmm. so that we don't have this ex inner explosion of a dirty secret, so to speak, a dirty secret that we've kept from ourselves, that if we can come into our center with compassion and with grace and with love, with commitment to self and view what is there. It doesn't need to explode in your face then. And then you get to celebrate your own authenticity. And I've got to tell you, that is a cherry on an already amazing cake. But if you get to experience that level of authenticity where you are truly you, the fullness and the allness of you as deeply as you can be as much as you can be as emotionally honest with yourself it doesn't have to be with anybody else just with yourself as you can be life takes on the most amazing energy it's kind of like you're living a new life yeah well you are <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's exactly. your past life at that point because who you used to be is no longer in congruency with who you are. So that's the end of this lifetime. And this is the beginning of the new lifetime. Yeah. All your choices so change like everything. That's enlightenment. That's all it is. Enlightenment is clearing yourself of the old you that you were so that you can begin to make choices as the new you that you are and learn from those choices so that you can evolve into a new self. Yeah. Be the light and you're spring... lost. Say that last line, I didn't hear it be the lighthouse to the lost ah because like all the yeah. ships that are lost at sea right now they just need a light to guide them home that's it and if you are mm -hmm. that light then you're going to find out that when they get home they're going to be so grateful that they set up a lighthouse next to you and so now you're able to get even stronger out there even more people that are way deep in the, the ocean that are, that are super lost that don't have any hope and then they start coming and then you get even further out and then they start coming and then you get even further out until eventually all that's left are lighthouses and then they're keeping each other lit. Mm -hmm. So that means that you are constantly being shown what you need to work on. And so it becomes easier and the light becomes brighter until everyone is a lighthouse leading everyone home. And then we all get to go home. And that's what we're doing. We're walking each other home, right? Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for this amazing conversation. Is there anything else that you wanted to bring through? Uh, ultimately, just remember that everything does get better. And if you actually pay attention and you turn off the news and you look at the energy of the world and you look at the self that is, you'll notice that it actually already has become better and that it will get better each day. And it will. It's so much better each day. But if you're paying attention to the world and the, you're listening to what the world tells you, it's going to tell you the opposite because that's its mm -hmm. job. Its job is to tell you the opposite so that you have to find the truth within you. But once you find that truth within you, it's not about speaking that truth to others. It's about being that truth for others. That's my best advice. And it's just the most life-changing advice. It's words that anybody will listen to and anybody in their right mind will nod their head and say, yes, Jason is onto something. But <laughs> do it. Yeah. Don't just hear the words and nod your head and go, yeah, that's a beautiful sentiment. It is within all of our grasp, like here, like right in front of us, to be that truth that you came to be. Yeah, and that's why I need to the lighthouse. Yeah. Because yeah. a lighthouse, if anyone that's ever been to a lighthouse, you know that a lighthouse doesn't actually have a spotlight that is searching for ships lost at sea. It has a continuous thing that is a trustworthy mm -hmm. thing that exists 
so that it's always on and always working. It's not seeking out to save. It's a beacon of hope for those that are lost at sea. And that beacon of hope isn't just on every few hours. That beacon of hope is always on. That's why I like the lighthouse example, because to be a lighthouse means that you have to be in your light always, not just, okay, well, it's, uh, it's between two and 4 PM. I'm going to be a lighthouse you know? because <laughs> if you know anything about hummingbird feeders, what happens when you don't fill a hummingbird feeder is you have a pile of dead hummingbirds because mm -hmm. they become reliant on that light. But if you're turning that light off every so often, you're no longer something that they can navigate using. You're no longer something of truth. You're something that sometimes is true. You're not stable. But if you agree to be a lighthouse, that means you're in that light at all times. So you're always looking, you're always finding, like you're, you're cleaning off that light. So it's like, oh, well, there's a little piece of mud here. Let me clean that off, right? So the light becomes even better and even brighter. You're always updating, you're always upgrading. It is a way of life to be a lighthouse. It is not a job. It is a way of life. And it's not something that seeks out to save, but rather saves itself. And in doing so, creates an opportunity for others to save themselves. Yeah. You know, there's something pretty amazing. I've noticed it so many times in my life that when I declare something, because the universe is always listening, right? So when I declare something, as an example, if I were to declare, oh yeah, I'm in unshakable peace. I'm telling you right now, the universe will go, are you really, Kerry? Yeah. Are you really? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and then the next day, something would happen. People call this tempting fate, but it's, it's, it's really the universe just double checking. Are you yeah. sure that that's, you know, are you sure that that's where you are? And so the reason that I, I, I share this is because we may all be tested. But no, the may. truth you, you will be tested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for saying it how it is. But the truth is, is that even when you are tested, even though you may not know it in that moment or even act it in that moment, there is always a part of you that is in that unshakable peace. There is always a part of you. And I find great solace in that. Yeah. That I, and, and it's the truth for me personally. I know this about myself. I could be having the worst time, the worst day, the worst moment. But no matter what's happening, there is always a part of me in that unshakable peace. And I share this because it's, it's worthwhile reminding each other that yeah. there is a part of you that really is okay if you don't feel okay today. There's a part of you that is the lighthouse, even if you feel a little bit dark and murky at the moment. Yep. There's a part of you that's always conscious. All you got to do is expand that part of you. So like you just gave the perfect example. If you're having a bad day, find the part of you that's not. Then expand that part of you into the part of you that is, and you'll find the truth of what was. And then all of a sudden, you aren't having a bad day anymore because you can see from this perspective that was small, that is now totality, and life becomes yeah. easier again. If you can remember that when you get triggered, it's very helpful. If you can't remember <laughs> that when you get triggered, when you're no longer triggered, go back to that moment and do that thing because you can always affect the past by making the present better. You just have to go back to the past with the tools of the present and upgrade it. That's mm -hmm. called updating your timeline. And it's huge. It's very easy to do. All you have to do is go back and find the part of you that was triggered and teach it from the part of you that isn't. And then that part of you heals and you actually have a strong ally for the next experience. Mm. That's beautiful and very powerful advice. Thank you so much for that. Thank you for bringing Jason that. Estes. What a beautiful conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you for reminding us that it really is simple. Um, a client of mine the other day said to me, Kerry, uh, we were doing a video call and she showed me behind her was just this library of books. And she goes and you know points to this library behind her and she says, I've got so many books and I don't know where to start and I feel I need something and I know there's information that I need and could you make some suggestions because I was thinking about blah, 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 and she rattles off the list and I said actually my suggestion for right now is don't read any books and she was kind of horrified and I'm not saying that books are bad obviously please don't take me out of context but I was saying to her sometimes 
it's worth our while to just discard everything and connect with ourselves. Yeah. We spend way too much time connecting with everything else and, and learning and researching. And, and, and that has its place in my life, in your life, in everyone's life. But there is a time to just be in the simple truth of who you are. So be there. When you're in the simple truth of who you are, you'll know what book you're supposed to read next, if you're supposed to read a book at all. <laughs> Seriously, when you are in that space, that space you know exactly 100% what's in front of you. You do that. And each yeah. time that you do that, you actually expand. Because when you honor your commitment to yourself, you expand. And the person that's giving you the thing that's in front of you is the greatest version of you. So why fight it? Yeah. I love these conversations with you. Thank you so much. You're one of the rare people that I can just speak to for hours and we're on the same page and it's beautiful and I know that the audience who's with us are those people too thank you so much to the ones in on the live stream who've shared such loving comments uh it's so beautiful looking down and seeing all the hearts and seeing everybody saying hey brother hey sister talking to each other in the comments wow. section you're just amazing human beings thank you to all of you thank you for your love bye everybody bye y'all <laughs> bye bye for